glad you came out on this beautiful Friday evening. What a gorgeous day today. And what we're here to celebrate is amazing, isn't it? This is what church is all about right here, what we're talking about tonight. There's going to be a little bit of music. We've got um, some songs for you guys to sing with us. And then the choir is going to sing a song. Then we'll do our communion service. And then we have, I think, four more specials that you we have for you to enjoy. So uh, buckle up. We'll be here about an hour. <laughs> about about an hour-ish, right? So, uh, and then we'll get you, get you out, all right? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to gather together on this Friday night. Thank you for the beautiful day, uh, the warm weather that's coming to us. I uh, thank you for all these folks that have gathered on this Friday night to remember your death. You said that we should have this communion service as, as often as we did. We, we should do it to remember you. God, uh, help us to bring glory and honor to you this evening. Uh, I pray if there's anyone here that doesn't understand how free, how wonderful <laughs> salvation is, that they will get a clear picture tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Brother Hallam? All righty, if you would, stand with me. We're going to open up with a new song, the song that I haven't sung around here. Pastor Bay sung it back in his early days. Hallelujah for the cross. How many's ever sung it here? All right, so we're going to learn it today. Sing along. Hallelujah for the cross.
a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in.
glad to be in church tonight? Glad to, you know what? You think about what that means on a Friday night, us gathering together to worship Jesus Christ, what that really means to us. We're going we're gonna to take a few minutes here and look in the scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, just before we open our communion, and then we'll have some more music that you can enjoy. I want you to, if you got your Bible, turn over to 1 Corinthians 11. I want to show you something here. The Bible says about this, what this is about. A lot of times we go to church and we do this and we don't really know what we're doing it for, and so I like to explain it every time. And so those of you that have heard it over and over and over again, hey, we enjoy hearing it over and over again, don't we? Huh? First Corinthians 11, it says on verse 17, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together not for the better but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That's a pretty powerful verse right there. But he says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that ye, we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together into condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So in this verse here, I just read a minute ago, it says that if someone eats of this table unworthily, he's guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And I stopped to, okay, so how can we make sure we don't do that, right? We, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be doing anything wrong here. And uh, so I, I got to looking at this again to see if it explained what exactly this was about and how we could keep from eating of this unworthily. And that's what I want to show you tonight. You see, one of the things that we don't communicate well in church, uh, pastors don't communicate it well, church people don't communicate it well. And that is that when we come to Christ, when we get saved, he paid for our sins, he paid everything. He paid the entire debt with his broken body and his shed blood. Amen? Aren't you glad tonight that he paid it all? Aren't you glad? He said, for by grace you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we know, we know, don't we, that it's a gift, right? God's given us this gift of salvation. The problem is, he's given it to people who aren't perfect. Hmm? None of us are perfect. We don't do everything right. So what happens when you do something wrong? Do you have to pay money? Do you have to go tell it to the priest? What do you do? Well, he made a, he made a plan. And that plan was simply his grace and mercy. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But then he gave us this. He gave us this to be able to stop and remember what he did for us. That's what this is for. To remind us how big a payment that sacrifice was. And then he said, I don't want you to take of this table unworthily. I don't want you to 
eat of my body or drink of my unworthily. I don't want you to do that. So here's what you're going to do. Let me show you how to keep from taking this unworthily. Let me show you. The first thing he, he deals with in 1 Corinthians 11, we talked about this in this section, is he said, why do you come together? You come together to eat supper. I heard somebody recently say, well, every time we go to church, we eat together, and that's communion. No, it's not. That's, that's called a Baptist fellowship. <laughs> no, every, every, or Methodist or whatever you are. Uh, it's it's just, just Christians getting together and eating, right? It's always a good thing, right? Christians getting together, we got to eat. Well, ain't the world too. Anybody, that's the way we do things, isn't it? That's our communication. You, you, you go out on a date, you, you eat, right? You go have fun with some friends. What do you do? You go eat, right? That's what we do. Well, um, he said here, this is not about getting to every time you get together doing this. Now, some churches, every time they get together, they do this. He said, you're not supposed to do that. He said, when you come together, therefore, into one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. When you come together, you're supposed to hear the preaching and that kind of thing. But this is done as a commemoration once in a while. That's, that's what he says here. Um, and the, the thing he deals with is divisions. Do you know what I noticed? That God is really particular about unity and equality in his church. Stay with me here. These, these are two things he deals with. Unity and equality. You know, the Bible tells us that if someone comes into your congregation and they're wearing a big ring and fancy clothes, you're not supposed to automatically put them in a, the front seat. Huh? If somebody comes in and they don't have a suit and tie on, you're not supposed to automatically put them in the front seat. Actually, the skin color or the clo color of your clothes or your background does not matter at all in the church. There's an equality. And one of the things he wants us to recognize here is that this is about us. It's called communion. It's about us coming together at the same plane. As someone once said, the foot is level at the, at the foot of the cross. Are you with me here? There's not one person in here that's better than any other person in this room. Look, I've given my whole life to preach in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've spent my entire life preaching this book but I'm not better than anyone else in here. I make as many mistakes. I've sinned as much as anyone else. My, my sin is probably greater than yours because I know better. Because I've heard this since I was a child. You, you hearing what I'm saying? We're, none of us are better than anyone else. Equality and unity. He wants us to strive. He says, strive for unity. Get together. So we get, we get bent out of shape over some of the stupidest things, don't we? Oh, we think they're important. They're important to us. But we divide over stuff that we shouldn't divide over. Things that aren't in the Bible that aren't even important. But in fact, the Bible says in the book of Jude, it says, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. A lot of times, these divisions come from our lusts and our, our flesh desiring to be higher than we should. So when we come to this table, we got to recognize something. All of us are equal. There's not one person better. Somebody's got a little more money than you do. God, praise the Lord. Somebody has a little less money than you. God will take care of them. Is there anything I can do to help? Right? That's how it ought to be. Unity and equality. If you practice that when you come to the table, that's the first thing you've got to pay attention to. Second thing I noticed, he said... He said, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Just two things, memory and prophecy. He said, do this in remembrance of me, and he says, do it until the Lord comes. One of the number one purposes of the church is to gather together and talk about the Lord's return. You'll see this all through the New Testament. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming. That's one of our, one of our key, the key tenets. In fact, that's what Maranatha means. Maranatha means Jesus Christ is coming back. We believe that. The church has always believed that. Um, that, that Jesus is coming back. We're looking for that return. So um, he says here two things. He says, remember me and look forward because I'm coming back. Let me tell you something, friends. I'm concerned about the state of our country. But I'm not really losing sleep over it. I read the last chapter. I know it's going to fall apart. I already know it is. Um, the way we're, that we're careening on a path of self-destruction. We're doing exactly what other empires have done 
we're doing the same exact thing. It, it, we can't continue in the path we're going. We will self-destruct. The good news is this. <laughs> Jesus is coming. When is he coming? I don't know exactly. He said, no man knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows it. Only the Father knows. And when he comes, the disciples were worried about it. They were concerned. They said, when, when, is, when is the end? And when, when are you coming? And he said, hmm. I don't know. I can't tell you. Only the Father knows. Like, how did Jesus say that? Well, that's a whole other thing. But truthfully, he said only the Father knows when this is going to end, when he's going to stop it all. But we're supposed to do this until he comes. Right? To remember that he is coming. What he did for us was so important. And, and it's all pointing to God being with us because that's the goal. When Jesus came and was born as a baby, the Bible says... They said, call his name Emmanuel, God with us. When we get back to Revelation 21, the end of all things, it's God with us, God living with us, being with us, us seeing our creator. That's what that's all about. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the day when I can see Jesus face to face. I'm looking forward to the day that I can see who my creator is, and I can understand the things that I don't understand now. Aren't you? That's, there's, that day is coming, and I'm looking forward to it. When it comes, I don't know. The third thing I, I want you to see is this. This is, how, this is how he fixes us. This is like this one time, it's like the one time when you have to stop and you judge yourself. He said, let a man examine himself. And he said, judge yourself. You're supposed to take this moment to stop and look inside. What am I doing that's displeasing God? Am I doing anything that's displeasing? See, when Jesus came to save you, salvation was free, right? It's free. But our behavior, that's based upon our decisions. And sometimes we make bad decisions. Would you do this? It'll help you. We do, don't we? Sometimes those bad decisions create problems. And sometimes we reap the consequences of those bad decisions. And it's time for us at this point to stop and examine ourselves. And he says, if you won't examine yourself, you're not worthy to eat here. You stop and look inside. And he said, after you examined yourself, he said, judge yourself. He says, if you don't judge yourself, I'm going to have to judge you. Look, at the, look what it says here. Verse 32, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. That's a big verse right there. God judges us if we don't judge ourselves so that we are not condemned. We can't be condemned, right? Because salvation is free, and when God gives us out salvation free, we can't be condemned with the world. But if we act just like the world, and we do stupid things just like the world, and we live our lives just like the world, and we sin just like the world, God's got to do something about it. And he said, here's the thing. If you'll stop and do it for me, if you will judge yourself, I'll give you the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. I'll give you a chance to examine yourself. And if you will judge yourself, I won't judge you. But if you don't, I'm going to give you a whooping. You're still my kid, but I'm going to have to straighten you out. He says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Many sleep. Some people die because they just refuse. They're just obstinate, refuse to obey God. You see what I'm saying? In this area, we have a lot of people, churches, that teach that you can lose your salvation once you get it. Well, that's not true. The Bible's clear on that. The Bible's very clear that Jesus paid it all. He finished it on the cross. And if you can keep yourself saved, you could win yourself to salvation. And that just isn't true. You can't win yourself to salvation. It's a free gift. I want to tell you something tonight. If anyone's sitting here and you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, it is so free, the Bible says that it's, it's nigh thee even in your mouth. You say, what? He said when he poured out the Holy Spirit on the world at the day of Pentecost, he poured it out on everyone. Listen, there are people, maybe under the sound of my voice, maybe online watching or, or sitting here in the service this evening, that have never put their trust in Jesus Christ, but right now you can sense and feel the finger of God in your heart. You're thinking the preacher's preaching right at you. Some of you have testified to that. You've come in here and you said, who told him what I was doing? I didn't, nobody. I don't know what you're doing. Well, listen, 
that, that's the finger of God. That's the Holy Spirit of God pointing his finger at you and saying, hello, I did something for you. And what he's saying is, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you say, Lord, I want you to save me. I want you to be my Savior. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that salvation is a permanent thing. It's a seal. He puts a seal on you. The Bible says he seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. And nobody can unlock that seal. That's amazing. Why do you think I put my hands up every now and then? Because I'm thankful to be saved. I lift my hands and think, I don't deserve this. God is so good to me. He's given this to me freely. And you know what makes me want to stop and do? It makes me want to look at my life and examine myself and say, mm, I need to fix that. You know, I remember when I was growing up in church, I grew up in a old fire and brimstone, leather lung preacher's home. I've, I've grew up in a, in a church where every sermon was a yelling sermon. He was hollering the whole time. I grew up in a, in a, in a, a place where black and white, the, everything was black and white. And, you know, Jesus wants you to live this way and he doesn't want you to live this way. I grew up in a home where we, my dad preached against television, would not allow us to have television in our home. You know why? I, I have one in my home now because television is so much cleaner than it was back then, but <laughs> I'm telling you, these streaming services are getting pretty bad, aren't they? I canceled a whole bunch of them. I couldn't believe it. All the garbage they're trying to push down our throats. Uh, but anyway... Do you, do, you, do you know why they preached against that stuff? Because some of them were watching things they shouldn't watch. Let me tell you a story. This is why my dad started preaching against television. This is why. He said every Tuesday night he wanted to watch the boxing match that was on television. Now, we're talking 1954, okay? So it wasn't much on television back then. But Tuesday night you got to watch the boxing matches. And my dad loved boxing. I'm telling you what, he was an Irishman, loved punching, loved watching punching. My grandpa was the same way. I grew up that way. That's why I hosted a couple MMA fights once. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. Here's the thing. Every Tuesday night was prayer meeting. My mom would get the kids together and take them down to the church to go to prayer meeting, but boxing match was on Tuesday night. So just before church, some of you guys might recognize this. All of a sudden, he's <coughs> tickling his throat, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> he's having trouble. <coughs> well, I just don't feel good. I've worked all day. I've been up since 3 in the morning. I just don't feel like going to church tonight. And as soon as mom left for church with the kids, dad miraculously felt much better and well, lo and behold, boxing matches were on. No sense wasting it. And every Tuesday night, the same thing happened. Some of you guys are grinning because you're recognizing this, aren't you? This is, this, is, this is a common problem. One night, Dad went to a revival meeting, and the preacher, preacher said, um, listen, he said, uh, you, guys, you guys need to, every time, you do something. You need to do it as unto the Lord. He said, you need to pray before you're going to do something and say, Lord, I want to do this for your glory. The Bible says everything you do should be done for the glory of God. So stop and pray before you're going to do something and ask God to get the glory. So that, that Tuesday night, Dad was feeling <coughs> a little bit sick, <coughs> and he sat down in front of the television set after Mom had left, and he said, wait, preacher said Sunday to ask God to get glory out of it. So he said, he, he said I went over, and I laid sincerely, laid my hand on top of the television set. They said, Lord, I want to do everything to your honor and glory. And he said, when I sit here and watch these guys, Lord, I'm done. He unplugged the television, turned it against the wall. When Bomb came home, that was the end of their TV, 1954. You know why? He judged himself. That's called judging yourself. Now, is everybody, did everybody have trouble with Tuesday night? boxing matches? No. It wasn't a rule for everybody. But he judged himself. 
And he said, my family, this is the way it's going to be. I'm going to raise my kids without television. I'm going to raise them without having that temptation to watch that and skip church. He judged himself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying you have to follow that rule to the T. What I'm telling you is you need to judge yourself. Look at your, your life and say, what am I doing? Am I pleasing God? Boy, am I, the relationships that I have, the things I allow in my relationships. The Bible says, blessed is the man that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. The things I'm allowing myself to do, are those things good for me? Are they good for my family? Are they good for my friends? Are they good for my community? Or am, I, am I slipping too much? Am I letting too much slide? Examine yourself. And if you look at yourself and you say, look, I just can't stay off Facebook. I'm on it all the time. Judge yourself. So, man, I just can't stop eating all the things I'm eating. Judge yourself. Man, I've got an addiction about. Judge yourself. And so let him eat. If you're not willing to judge yourself, God said, I'm going to have to do it for you. My kids, as they were growing up, they could tell you this many, many times. I looked at my sons. My daughter never did anything wrong, so I never did this with her. <laughs> now, all three of them, honestly, I look at them and say, do you want to fix this or do you want me to fix it? I can fix this. I can take away your car keys. I can take away your telephone. I can take away everything you know, it's my air you're breathing. Right? They've heard that before. Every single time they said, let me judge myself. And you know what? I do the same thing with God. God says to me, I uh, shouldn't be doing that. I'm like, uh, 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 I'll get it. I'll take care of it, sir. Because if I take care of it for myself, he doesn't have to do anything about it. Are you hearing me? I'm asking you tonight to take a minute as we're passing this stuff out, examine yourself. Correct the things that need to be correct in your heart. Make determinations and decisions in your mind and heart. And then go out and do them correctly. This is what this is about. It's that chance to do that. Okay? If you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, I would like you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a minute. If you've never asked him to save you before, Salvation is so simple that he says even a child can do it. It's so close to you. It's so easy for you. There's no strings attached. I heard somebody say recently that anytime you get a favor from God, there's strings attached. That's just not true. No, not true. No strings attached. He said, it's free. For by grace you save through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift. It's a gift. God wants to give you a gift of salvation tonight. And all you have to do is ask for it. That's it. So well, I don't know how to do that. Well, why don't you right now quiet your heart just for a minute and talk to God. Between you and him, not me, nobody's going to sign you up to anything. You don't have to pay any money. You don't have to join anything. Just right now, look at God and say, God, what the preacher says is true. I want to ask you for salvation. Tonight, I'd like to be saved. I'd like that free gift that he's talking about. I want to know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. Lord, I need you to forgive my sins. Please do that for me tonight in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. But if you'd say, preacher, I just prayed that prayer with you. Would you slip your hand up and let me see it? Anybody at all? God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. Anybody else? Just prayed that prayer with me. God bless you. God bless you. If you just raised your hand right now, you can partake with this just like everyone else. You can be part of this and say, thank you, Jesus, for the blood, what the choir just sang. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. God bless you tonight. I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm so glad that you came and asked Jesus to save you. If you're a Christian and you're, you're struggling with something, put it aside. Say, Lord, I don't have the strength to beat this addiction. Oh, he does. Hey, I serve a God who's powerful enough to save you. I serve a God who's powerful enough to free you. He's a bondage breaker, my friends. He can break the bondage. 
if you'll let him by faith. Why don't you, why don't you examine yourself? If I can have the deacons come forward and the pastor staff. What we're going to do, you can look up here at this point. What we're going to do is um, we're going to pass out what we call the, the bread, okay? This is, this is Jewish matzos. It's got a little salt in it. It's salted to remind us of the eternity of salvation, the eternity of the promise. So I'll have you guys come and take care of this. One of you here, Tony, you're going to take this. And Sam, they're going to pass this out. If you would take, take one and hold it and wait, and then we're going to pass the juice out. And we'll take one of those and hold it. Wait, we're going to bless it together and take it together. Okay? Sound good? If you, parent, parents, whatever you want to do with your children, if they put their trust in Jesus Christ, they can be part of it. The Bible says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For if such is the kingdom of God. If they don't quite understand it, you know what? It's not going to hurt them. They're innocent. Okay? I'm just going to tell you that. God bless you.
It says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. What this means tonight, my friends, is that when Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin, God said, that was enough. That's all I need. I don't need your good works. I don't need anything that you have. Jesus paid it all. That's why we rejoice in church. That's why we lift our hands and praise the Lord. It is such a good thing, isn't it? Let's, let's pray and, and thank the Lord. Father, thank you for this special commemoration that you've given us. We want to continue doing it until you come. No matter what happens, we will. God, I pray that um, you would bless this together. Bless us with unity. Bless us in, with equality. Bless us as we examine ourselves. Give us the strength to overcome the things that we need to overcome in our lives. God, help everyone in this room to know how perfect you are and that we can trust your faith, your work for our salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bless you. They took the bread and he blessed it and then he took the cup. Let's take the bread and eat that together in unity as we remember the broken body that, that was broken for us. Jesus Christ giving his whole life for us. The Bible says that every sacrifice was supposed to have salt to remind us of the permanence of the sacrifice. That's one of the reasons I believe in eternal security. Yeah. Took the cup likewise. Wow. The life of the flesh is in the blood. What a blessing. I'm going to tell you, we've got some more music for you. I want to enjoy this. Pastor Paul is going to come and sing a song about the Lamb of God. We've got a couple other specials. Sit tight, listen to them, and then we'll, be, we'll, we'll have prayer and be finished, okay? Let's praise the Lord together. creation waits for you and trembles at your name. Surrounded on a throne of endless praise, fire and lightning flash from the glory of your face. And I sing to you. to see
and I kneel before you. You are holy.
Philippians chapter 2 says, speaking of Christ, it says he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. When I think of that, I think of Christ, the king of all creation, the one who spoke and everything was, the one who made it all, the Lord of all nations, not a single king exists except the Lord allows that, and he took upon himself and made himself in the likeness of men. That doesn't just mean the appearance, it doesn't just mean that he looked like us, it means that he had the same characteristics. He suffered the same as we did. He had the same feelings we had. His feet became sore when he walked all day. He was hungry. He was tired. He didn't have to do all that. But for you, he, he did. I was singing this song. Some of you heard the story. I was singing this song. <clears throat> I drive a lot, sometimes three and a half hours at a time, and I do nothing but sing songs on repeat. And when this one hit me, I got so much, I got choked up so much that I actually had to pull over. I couldn't see to drive. When I realized that he didn't just die for my sins, he came to earth and lived as a human. He experienced everything. He put himself under the curse of sin, a sin that he wasn't guilty of. Yes, he died for my sins, and I don't want to take away anything from that, but he lived under, for his whole life, he lived under the curse of my sins. The songwriter here of this song, this is why it means so much to me, the songwriter of this song grabbed that truth so well. I want you to pay close attention to the words of this one. Coming up in just a minute. really hard to not have any technical difficulties. He said, talk some more. been blessed so far this evening. Some of those songs we sang. And when we, when we pick songs, and this is just a quick sidebar while we're getting that ready, when we pick the songs, we do them with a purpose. We do them to um, point our hearts in the right direction. We do them, I hope you guys understand that. We're not just singing words. We're not just filling time. We're not just um, going through a ritual when we sing. Even as a congregation, whether it's a choir, whether it's specials, or a congregation, you guys are part of all of that, um, and we, we want you to, to be looking. We want to put your hearts and minds in the right spot and prepare your hearts for the message when the Word of God is preached. And I hope that was accomplished tonight as we look toward what he did for us on the cross. There it is.
What manner of man is this who tires as soon as I? What kind of man is this, this man that I've seen cry when his friend faced death, but with his next breath raised him yet alive? What manner of man is this, whom winds and seas obey? What kind of man is this, who teaches how to pray like we've never known? Go before the throne of the Father on high. He is Jesus, King of creation. He is Jesus, Lord of all nations, bound up in human Needing food and sleep and rest. Fully man yet holy God. What manner of man is this? What manner of man is this who stands out from the crowd? What kind of man is this before whom a father bowed and with sorrowed voice made the humble choice to beg his daughter's life? What kind of man is this who makes a blind man see and heals an outcast soul from his leprosy, takes a laughing stock and then makes him walk <laughs> just like you and me. He is Jesus, King of creation. He is Jesus, Lord of all nations, bound up in humanness, needing food and sleep and rest, fully man yet holy God. What manner of is this what manner of man is this who stands in Pilate's hall while screaming crowds insist he die and suffer all what kind of man is this Suspended between earth and heaven In blood and agony So I could be for What manner of man is this? What manner of God is this?
so glad you came tonight. I hope you are too. Let's close in a word of prayer. God, you've been good to us tonight. Thank you for those who have accepted you this evening, put their trust in you. Thank you for those that have cleansed their hearts and washed their feet. Lord, I pray that you'd help us as we go from here. May you be close to us in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to invite you to Easter Sunday morning here at church, 9.30 Sunday school, 10.30 morning service. The choir is going to sing a new song about the heartbeat of heaven, and we're excited about that. Some more singing and praising the Lord. So you come back again, okay? God bless.